hi guys welcome back to my channel my name is Tristan for those that are new here as you can see from the title we're going to be talking about something very interesting we're going to be talking about gossip blogs yes just begin to imagine all the gossip blogs that you know if you know of any we're going to be talking about them we're going to be talking about them in regards to being a believer and should we or should we not indulge in them either casually as a lifestyle day-to-day -day reading or you know seldom check them out we're going to be exploring that in this video now if i had a penny for every time this topic has crossed my mind to make someone has sent me a specific dm about this topic someone has left a comment on my youtube videos asking me about maybe what do you think about this topic or even me just even um, thinking about it organically as content for my youtube channel i'll probably have a couple of pennies so let's talk about you know gossip blog reading i'm going to talk about it from my own personal experience i feel like there should be a dedicated video for this topic on youtube and that's why i'm making this video for believers okay for believers so yeah without further ado let's get right into the video okay so what is gossip let's start from that and then what is blog right so let's talk about blogging a blog is a platform a media platform usually written text-based form where people share their thoughts their ideas to the public to read some can be persuaded some are membership only and some are free to the public to read that is what a blog is it ranges from personal life experiences it ranges from tailored topics like fashion food faith lifestyle history whatever you want to talk about it's that it's just a Cumulation of people's thoughts and ideas that they are willing to put down in text. That's really what a blog is. Now, what is gossip? I know the first thing that might come to your mind is, you know, talking malicious, maliciously about another person. But I want us to go to the dictionary meaning of gossip. So I'm going to read that out to you. According to the Oxford Langu English Language Dictionary, gossip is a casual or unconstrained conversation or reports about other people typically involving details that are not confirmed as being true. So that's one. Now, another definition of gossip, according to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary of English Language, is a gossip, now who the person is, is in a personifying what a gossip is, not the subject matter now. A person who habitually discusses and reveals personal or sensational facts about others. Now, this one calls it facts. So we've seen two sides of what gossip is. It could be unconfirmed information and it could be facts. But what ties these two definitions together is it's not your business. It's about another person's life. So now let's talk about it from scriptures and relating it to everyday living intertwined with my own personal experience. So when was the first time I stumbled on a gossip blog? I would say this would definitely be 2011. I went to a university where we did not use phones. Every time we had access to the internet, it wasn't to check out gossip. <laughs> I don't even think people's business was like that on the internet. It was, um, we just go online, we'll go and maybe social media, Facebook, chat with your parents, check emails, we'll download music, download series. That was what I, we, we, that time, I'm talking as far back as 2000 and even 2005 from to 2011 that those seven year or six year gap with i i personally to say i did not use the internet for anything it was one of my business at that time there was no even i did not even know what to check but then i finished uni and i have this friend he's a guy by the way and i was just chatting with him one day on the phone and he asked me randomly was like oh if you open your laptop what are the three tabs that you open Oh, then I was like, oh, my, my own fashion blog, maybe Facebook, and I think the last thing was YouTube. Yeah, because I, I just go into the YouTube world that time. He was like, oh, really? And I said, okay, what about yours? This guy, this is someone that, um, I knew he liked me. We were exploring a casual friendship that was supposed to lead to a relationship. It was a great guy, by the way. And he was like, oh, his own was his work stuff, email, tab, and then he mentioned a popular Nigerian woman's blog. I thought, this, I'm talking as far back as... 10 years ago and I said oh what's that and he was like you're joking you don't know what that is I'm like no I've never even heard the name before I was like go and check it out and I was like okay cool 
So after the call, I just went online. I typed the name they gave me, blah blah blah. In fact, the person's blog did not even. It was not even a dot com. I think it was dot blogs spots, as at that time or something like that. So I went on and I checked it, and I could not believe my eyes. You know, I I was seeing news and information about people's personal lives. You guys, that day I probably spent at least maybe three hours on that day on that page on that website. You guys. I would read, you know, then so now say read more. The the blog page only had like er, er, excerpts, only had like summaries of the stories. So let me do say tossing words da 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 third marriage after previous marriage cash. Not me, Jesus name. I'm just using context. I would say um Jennifer and um, these were popular people of interest in, in the community. Popular this person, this this person reveals childhood secrets about so so and so and so. Ah, ah. There was like an insatiable appetite for me going through the stories. I just could not, I don't even know if it was true. It was not my business. It was just news. So I just, I was reading, I was reading. Popular former MBGN in rumored relationship with so so and so president. Ah! I was 19. <laughs> I was 19 that time. And my, probably my purpose were probably coming out of my socket like, ah! ah. I can't believe this news so you know I was reading and before I knew it you guys this woman specific blog it became my routine <laughs> this was me before that I would wake up I'll do my prayers I'll do my devotional I don't even think we had you version devotionals at that time what I used to do that time for my devotional was actual books like actual books I'll buy a devotional book maybe daily manner maybe you know the one for my church that I attend and I will study, study my Bible once I'm done. I go on my laptop, maybe check my emails, or play, up, update my own fashion blog. And I'll maybe go to work or I go and do, I think then I was doing a course. I can't remember what I was doing that period of my life. Before I knew it, you guys, this thing became like a year-long obsession. And I was a Christian. I had given my life to Christ. I was born again. As I said, I was 19. I had given my life to Christ at that time. So... I'll just be reading, 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 reading. And this time of my life, obviously I was still a baby Christian. I, I, obviously what I know now, I did not know it then. I had not subjected myself to leadership of the Holy Spirit as I ought to at those periods of my life. But I'm just telling you a statement of facts. So I'll go on this woman's website literally every morning. In fact, I now started discussing it with my friends. Like, oh, did you hear that? The person said, ah, I didn't realize how popular this person's you know platform was this woman's platform was there was so much drama there was you know hot topics if there was something about everyone in fact you can wake up tomorrow and the person that is on the blog is somebody that used to date their father literally that that's how so close to home those topics were for me and i used to read it but guess what our god is so good as i grew in the faith just not even thinking that was an issue as I grew in the faith, became, you know, a more mature, you know, believer, a growing Christian, let me put it that way. As I grew in the faith, you know, when I finished praying in the morning, you know, on, or I pray the night before I go to church, and then the next day, I'm online, I'm even reading, in fact, those, that platform was so horrible, for lack of a better word, that the comments were even more vile than the posts. So I would find myself cackling away. People would be insulting themselves in the comments and it would be so hilarious. Someone would say, ah, I see this one's head like hexagon. Say, and I would laugh. I would say, ha, ha, ha. You know, forgetting what the Bible says, that cursed is the person that sits in the sit on the, of mockers. <laughs> because the Bible says, blessed is a man that does not walk in the path of the ungodly. So if you're not blessed, there's no middle ground. What are you? You are cursed. Forgetting that the Bible says that you should not sit in a sit of mockers. You should not be a scoffer. But I would laugh, laugh, laugh. It was, I did I would never type. I would never leave any comments because it was my business. I would never say, oh, I would never say, wow. I would never say, see your head. No, but I was binging on these things. Then, but the more I read it, and as I was growing and God was doing that work in my life, I was getting acquainted with, you know, more mature belief. I was growing into a woman. You know, my blog was even beginning to change. I wasn't doing fashion anymore. I was now beginning to share things from my personal Bible study. I had come abroad from my master's at this point now. And I think I was turning 20 at that time. I was doing my master's here. I had more time to spend alone. There was really no influence of any friend. 
I was alone, I was spending more time in God's word on YouTube, I was listening to sermons, I, will, I now began to get convicted about reading this person's blog. Now, mind you, I'm not even talking about Instagram. This was just one blog that I used to read that time that was a fully centered gossip blog. I've not even come to it. Instagram, Instagram was just a picture sharing app for pretty pictures. Well, it had not pivoted into where you can be on Instagram for hours. It wasn't like that the way it is now. Then I started getting convicted. I'm like, you know what? I shouldn't be reading all this. Because my business reads who killed person, who who not even killed, who slept with somebody's husband, whose mother did DNA test, who stole kin. As long as it's not national political information, it's not economic news, even that as well, you have to even guide your heart or guard your heart so that you don't just hear bad news, bad news every time, even about economic dealings that even makes you to worry and not even trust God. And I'm going to come back to that later. But, you know, imagine every day, probably during COVID, I don't know if you guys remember, every day you read the news, 3,000 people died, 700 people died, this one, this one. Before you know it, you are so paranoid, you know, that's what ungodly news does to you or news that do not bring new good tidings. Now, back to this, my... Um, past gossip blogs ex gossip blog experience i started getting convicted to the point where i just the holy spirit was dealing with me like what are you doing what how does it concern you and i would say that you know by the mercies of god god delivered me from that blog to the point where i started counting numbers it was even like you know how people maybe they used to take drugs before they would not say oh i'm five years sober you know how they say they are five years sober that was exactly how the point I got to the point where I'll be like, oh, you know what? I've actually not read this blog in two months and I did not die. This was then as a 20 year old and God weaned me from that. I started my own self creating more positive content on the internet. So I didn't even have time to look at what another person is doing. Now I've talked about my own experience with gossip blog and how I got a conviction that a believer should not be found in gossip blog section. That was personally. And I'll now come to how it can appeal to you in case you read them or watch them as we see now on youtube or if you are still waiting to get conviction now fast forward now let's go to scriptures right i'm going to read a couple of scriptures for you as i always say it's much more better for you to open your bible as long as you can hear and you can see and read it with me right so now i'm going to read the scriptures i'm going to read can either appeal to the gossiper themselves the reader the commenter and the one that you're neither here nor there but you you indulge so let's go first one Ephesians 4 29 it talks about do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth but only what is helpful for building up others according to their needs that it may benefit those who listen one <laughs> with their mouth the godless destroy their neighbors this is Proverbs 11 9 but through knowledge the righteous escape Another one, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 10. Or do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who have sex with men, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, <laughs> nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. Psalms 34, 13. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. Proverbs 15, 4. The soothing tongue is a tree of life, but a perverse tongue crushes the spirits. Proverbs 16, 28. A perverse person stirs up conflict and a gossip separates close friends. Proverbs 15, 2 to 3. The one who, whose walk is blameless, who does what is righteous, who speaks truth from their heart, whose tongue utters no slander, who does no wrong to a neighbor and casts no slur on others. He's talking about like a righteous person. Last one I'm going to read, Proverbs 11, 13. A gossip betrays a confidence, but a trustworthy person keeps a secret. They already see that the Bible does not mince words. It doesn't, it doesn't mince words about speaking ill of other people, on a wholesome tongue, being perverse, mockery, slander, spreading information that was given in confidence. It's almost a no-brainer. And I know that someone that might be, for some reason, thinks that, come on, every believer should know that, you know, you should not gossip. <laughs> You'll be shocked. Every believer knows that you should not be 
you know indulge in sexual immorality but we still have people that are even watching this video that they are still going to their boyfriend's house this weekend and their girlfriend's house and they're still going to commit um, sexual immorality so it's not enough to sit on some pedestal and, and assume that everybody is probably like you or God has delivered them from the same things you once struggled with or they should know better. No, people struggle with these things as basic as the sin. People struggle with them and I've given you my own personal life ex example on how this thing was almost an addiction for me and I used to read it every day. So that's that. So from scriptures, we're already clear on these things. Well, a couple of reasons why specifically and practically a believer should not indulge in gossip blogs now i know that there's a thin line between newspapers and gossip blogs nowadays so we have gossip outlets that their job is to spread gossip that's the main reason why a lot of people are subscribing to them that's their unique selling points that also share news of maybe economic matters maybe the dollar has crashed from so so and so and so to so maybe nigeria is now infected no swell swell subsidy maybe there's now going to be um i mean you know no what, what's the english word now for example low emission zone areas for those that live in the uk for instance you know low emission zone they're they're they're, they're gossip platforms they're, they're primarily gossip platforms but now they also share news from those platforms or from those economic you know topics just to balance it out so you find that because they now do that you're almost now justifying why you are on that gossip platform are you hearing me now let me say that again there are gossip platforms that they are primarily gossip platforms that the way they started up was sharing primarily gossip and that's what garnered their following but over time the gossip has now been diluted with normal economic news talking about exchange rate fluctuations, university and the government's affiliations, for subsidy or no false subsidy, national disasters, happenings in other countries, you know, things like that. So you now justify the reason why you are on those gossip black platforms because you, find, you think that you are getting those other information as well. But guess what? <laughs> A fraudster or a fake person can also share wisdom that's just one of the lessons that God gave me this year a fake prophet can also share wisdom so are you now going to say because this person shares some wisdom I'm going to spend my time in their house or should you not say the Bible says that be ye babes to evil and flee from all appearances of evil so no matter how relevant the other topics they are sharing is, there are more honorable platforms that I can listen or get those information if they're necessary to the wholesome build or to my own maybe academic prowess or for me to know more, if they're really wholesome, that I can get that same news without the temptation of if I scroll one up, it's somebody's personal life information that is out there. That's one. I'm just showing you the tactics that the devil uses. That's one. Mixing good with with, uh, with, with, oh, with pure evil, but putting a little sprinkle of good in such a way that it justifies the reason why you use those things. So that's one. Another reason is the Bible says, do unto others what you want to be done to you. That's the golden rule, right? Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love people as Christ loved the world. Now I want you to imagine if your own personal life, there's a... A, what would I call it a catastrophe or something happens in your family maybe your own blood sibling or your you yourself you're in a relationship where you're being abused maybe you're already married to this person you're doing your best to make the marriage work but the person is cheating on you or the person is beating you or even you yourself you're cheating on the person or you have a sibling and maybe the sibling is maybe abusing drugs or the sibling is you know doing things that you know they are fraudulent the person does fraud do you want to wake up one day and you see your personal news on the internet because maybe you confided in a friend? Breaking news. Tishagun and Tasare are going through marital turmoils with facts. All the chats that you sent with the, to the person in privacy to show that, look at what I saw on my husband's phone. My husband is having an affair and you see it on a gossip blog. Now the difference between you and those people that their personal businesses are being shared, it's just that you are not a person of influence. 
and you're not a person of interest. So perhaps if you're actually blue in your own business and you're a very wealthy fabric merchant or you're a very wealthy oil, you know, oil and gas expert or you're a wealthy person's daughter, that means that your news too can be there. There's something that they say, my, I think Bishop Oedipo used to say this, that those who make the news don't watch the news. It's cliche, but it's actually true to an extent. Those who make the news, they don't sit down on their lives spending on So it's you that you've not made the news. You are reading about other people. So how would you feel if you truly believe that you, know, you should love your neighbor as yourself? If you woke up in the morning and you saw your personal chats, your personal things, that there's even embellishments. It's not even true. If it's the correct fact, it's different. But it's not even true. And it's rumor laced with, and it's not even true. Like, it's just not true. And you see it on the internet. Now, the things that happen to you, we're not saying it's good. We're not saying, oh, you should be encouraged that you're cheating on your husband or your husband is cheating on you or vice versa or your child is going through so, so and so. No. We're saying that that's why there's something called personal. It's between yourself, your loved ones, and your family, if you even care to share. Or maybe as a woman, you're going through infertility woes and you've tried IVF maybe 30 times, 15 times, and it's not working. You don't want to wake up in the morning because you are some celebrity, you have a big business or you sing or you act and then you see something something rocks her world. Failed IVS and missed marital woes and missed in-law dramas. You see how these people were, the, you know what I mean, I'm sure you can relate to what I mean. So definitely that's another thing. Secondly, you don't want your personal business out there so why are you reading another person's personal business? That's two. Now, another clear reason that we can see also why gossip blogs, no matter how they like to, frame themselves is that it's one industry that I can never see God saying well done my good and faithful servants you were calling out evil and you were using the sword you were calling out corrupt politicians but you were also sharing people's nudes online and their leaked sex tapes I don't see I can't imagine the Holy Spirit inspiring somebody to post that so any job actually that I don't see the wisdom of the Holy Spirit behind I'm not going to be a part of it. And I don't think any believer should. And I know as I'm saying these things, it may come off as ba ba or oh, interesting. But I want you to internalize these things that I'm saying. Do you, if you as a born again Christian can justify the Holy Spirit inspiring somebody to publish someone's marital woes online, please, I'd like to see your explanation in the comment box below. The Bible says that God is holy and without holiness, nobody can see God. So definitely it's a no. Like, so that's the third reason why, you know, definitely it's not a business or an industry that I can see any works that you do being inspired by the Holy Spirit. So no. And if it's not inspired by the Holy Spirit, who is it inspired by? Satan, the father of all liars. That's who he's inspired by. Another reason is why they cannot curtail the response they get. And a lot of industries can curtail the response that they get. I mean, even businesses that are selling Bibles can still get bad reviews, right? I'm not talking about that. But they incite hate. And the Bible says that there's seven th abomination that God hates. You know that scripture. I'll put it on the screen. A screen. A fit that is swift to running evil, to running to evil. Another one is people that bring people's heads together. Someone that you are an instigator of, 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 of you are instigating one fan against another fan. You are instigating two people against each other. A friend did offend another friend, but you've robbed them of the capacity of setting, settling it amicable privately. You've put all their personal business online that their fans will not start adding fire and foil and everything. So, of course, something that maybe ideally me and my friend, I just said, oh, I know I said, you know, what you said to me really hurt my feelings. I don't like it. I'll give you space for a couple of days. But when it's online, it can actually cause an enmity for life because of the public embarrassment. It can. So obviously, any platform that instigates even verbal violence, instigates things like that, you know, encourages mockery, people insulting people, people that they would, they, <laughs> they would do anything to have the life that you have, but yet, because they've been given a platform to insult you, they begin to, you know, say things that they don't even, there's no respect, they don't even care if the person is a hundred years old, they wash the person. No, no, there's no, it's just gutter behavior. That's another reason why gossip blogs are foul. I know, as I said earlier, that somebody can say, you know, why does anyone need this, you know, tabular um, examples and reasons why? The truth is, what well, you can read a book and you'll be like, duh, and me, I read a book and I'll be like, wow, Eureka moments. 
it, one message is not for everybody just say what i'm saying so that's another reason why gossip blogs are not good and i'm sure there are a host of others it ruins privacy it ruins marriages it ruins the opportunities of people getting back together it, it causes people to be mentally unstable it can drive people to suicide it can drive people to have suicidal thoughts it can drive people to depression and the bible says that we should only engage in things that all things that are true all things that are loving all things that are experience things that are useful for bringing people together and i'm not saying there's no place for rebuke no when you take love out of anything you've ruined it all once you take love out of any rebuke any re any even candid you know feedback once you take the true desire for the person to do better out of it and it's almost like a witch hunt you've you've you yourself you're equally as guilty <laughs> there's something that I, I tell my friend that you can't correct evil with evil you can't correct disrespect with disrespect it, it's you are equally as guilty you see what i'm saying so may the lord help us especially you know with this topic especially because less the temptation is more you know sometimes my friend sends me a news i'm like oh my god look at what happened this is not even people's personal lives or maybe a tragedy happens maybe someone that um maybe they lose a loved one and it's so heartbreaking and i'm like oh my god my heart and i click on it and i see that oh, it's all these evil platforms and you're human you just maybe glance at before you even scroll away from me you see these people already fighting over something that should should attract only sympathy and well wishes and prayers. Those are the dangers of those places. It just corrupts your mind. I remember many years ago, this is not even gossip blog now. I used to watch all these American um, feisty shows and I'll give it context. All this like love and hip hop, all these real wives of, all this kind of shows. Real wives of, I don't know, I see it's been so long. All those kind of shows, right? And when I finished watching it, they used some really, really like condescending lines that anybody that should annoy me after that, I'll use those lines on them. It makes you very, you finish the show and you're already so feisty, you're already imagining yourself. It's the same thing with these blogs. Yes, I know that because as an older person, you might have your own personal life and things that you're like, I don't even think about it. Things. It's a lie. You see, there, it's like whatever you feed yourself in, it's going to exhibit itself in other areas of your life you'll see information you'll be using to sub your friends you'll see things online that maybe is a slightly relate to maybe your own misunderstanding with your spouse or with your with your friend you begin to add to plus two you'll be taking evil counsel on board unconsciously you know things that ideally you could have settled amicably but you'll be taking things from context from those strange places and you'll be applying it to your personal life either you like it or not, either you even intend to or not so basically, these are some of the re reasons amongst a host of others. I'm sure if I continue, this video will be one hour long of why I want to discourage. You know, usually when I make videos, I'll say I want to encourage you. I want to discourage you. In fact, in my own personal life, I've noticed that because I don't read those things, I have a lot of joy. I don't care. Like, it's not my business. I, I, I have a lot of joy. It's, it's, it's not my business. So... We all keep saying, oh, can't you just mind your business? But if you actually check your own, you're not minding. If you're minding your business, you will not be there waiting for them to drop another information by 11 p.m. about somebody's life and somebody's marriage. It's not your business. It's a personal development area that God has thoroughly worked on me. Even, you know, during COVID, you know, there was a lot of idleness and there was, there was opportunity for, for even me to be tempted to even go back to those platforms and begin to binge them, you know. But, you know, I thank God for the grace of God. So, as I said earlier, I want to discourage you from reading any form of this gossip blog. Any platform that was primarily designed to share the personal business and affairs of and other people. When you measure it by the word of God, it's like, what am I doing? Any platform that shares, especially when they don't even give the, the parties an opportunity to, to air their opinion. They are not even the court of law. You want to be the judge, you want to be the jury, you want to be the court, you want to be the bailiff, you want to be everything. You want to be the plenty, if you want to be the, it's not your business, you know. So when you just assess these things and you actually think thoroughly as a child of God, you see that you have no business on these platforms. And I'm not saying this, as I said earlier, from any air of, no. I'm talking, telling you about what God has delivered me from. And I know he can deliver you too. Nobody is too into something that is more than the power and saving power of God. So win yourself of it. Begin to, you know, decide that I don't want to do this anymore. It's none of my business. I want to grow in the faith. Use that time to study your Bible. Use that time to, to go and read on, I don't know, something that can add value to you. Just forget the affairs of other people and mind your own life. And stop 
stop giving commentary on other people's lives let it go so that's those are the things that i wanted to share and also i know i talk about gossip blog it's not just that there are even youtube channels that they sit down discussing people's personal lives in fact there's one i'm going to share this and i'm going to end this video there was one that i stumbled on i can't remember the name of the channel i wouldn't even want to share it on my channel and i don't know i just stumbled on a person's video the, the topic was captivating and i clicked on it <laughs> this is a while back and the person was saying this thing was like no malicious intent the person was just stating facts of the case and i was like oh in my <laughs> subconscious oh i like this channel you know no foul words just stating facts and do you know what the holy spirit said to me there is no honorable way to gossip there's no honorable way to gossip so i want to just encourage you not to be a fellowship with the ungodly don't do it okay okay so yes thank you so much for watching this video i'll be more than happy to see your comments i really hope that you you know feel led to drop comments and i'll be more than happy to read to like to engage and to respond and if you see any parts of this video that really really minister to you feel free to pick up your phone rewind record those parts and share it on your social media platforms so that more children of god can hear this message so yes i love you guys until next time stay blessed Bye bye